Nimm meine Patische für den jetzt bitte zu Sankt ihm. Amen. Good morning, everyone, and a blessed um, feast of the apparitions of Lourdes, Our Lady of Lourdes. Um, and this is indeed the, um, uh, the celebration um, of the apparitions to uh, Saint Bernadette Subaru, uh, when Our Lady um, herself uh, uh, referred to herself under the title um, uh, uh, the Immaculate Conception. Uh, but to, so today it does mark, it marked the first of the apparitions to a Bernadette Subaru. This was at Lourdes, France in the year 1858. And uh, um, Our Lady would appear to Bernadette uh, 18 times, uh, the first of which was today. And then the final and last apparition was on July 16th, the feast of Our Lady of Mount Carmel. Uh, and Bernadette, actually, St. Bernadette has no feast day in the traditional calendar. Um, she has, um, it was kind of moved around a bit. It was proper to France and then, and then the Universal Church. Uh, but she has, she has a feast in the Novus Ordo calendar, but not the traditional calendar. So this is um, as much as she'll get at the Feast of Our Lady of Lourdes. Now, she herself um, was 14 years old in the year 1858 when the apparitions began. From uh, poor, ignorant, and really not even that pious, as she herself says. And her, her family lived in what used to be a jail, actually a dungeon, really. And mom and dad and nine children all lived in one room. Uh, now, the first of the visions occurred when she was just out with uh, her sister and one of her friends, and she saw Our Lady in the grotto um, and, and thought that everybody had seen it, but it turned out only to be her. Three days later, she had another vision, same grotto, and she told her sister not to tell anybody, but of course, her sister, they, they were like, you know, 12 and 14 years old. Of course, her sister told her mom. They both got a spanking, right, for making up stories, as, as you know, usual. Uh, but the, the apparitions continued, and it was on the third vision uh, on February 18th, which Our Lady told Bernadette um, uh, that she wanted her to uh, continue coming every single day for two weeks. Uh, so every day for a fortnight, two weeks. Um, it was in that vision also, uh, Our Lady said, I cannot promise you happiness in this life, but only in the next. Uh, that's kind of one of the, um, the hallmarks of, I would say, uh, you know, a, a true apparition or something like that is the message that you don't want to hear, but it's true, right? And you know that it's true. Uh, so th thus began the series of visions, uh, which are rather remarkable for being unremarkable. Uh, there was no um, messages for mankind. There were no revelations, no secrets, no predictions, no dire messages. Our Lady simply asked Bernadette to pray for poor sinners to do penance, and sometimes nothing at all, but merely prayed the rosary. Uh, on the 25th of February, eight days into that um, meeting for, for two weeks, Our Lady asked Bernadette Subaru to drink and bathe from uh, the spring which was confusing to her at first because there was no spring. It didn't exist. Uh, she also told her to eat of the herbs. So Bernadette dug into the ground, produced a little, um, a little trickle, and then soon a miraculous spring appeared, which remains to this day. And this is the source of the Lourdes water, which has healed hundreds of people to date. Uh, there in Lourdes, they actually have a team of medical doctors in place examining these uh, miracles. And there are, I think there's like, um, there's a few Catholics, a few atheists, uh, you know, a Jew, something like that. So it's not, there, this is an unbiased panel uh, reviewing these miracles. And to date, uh, there are 70, um, 70 healings which these doctors, these atheists, non-Christian, non-Catholic doctors cannot explain by science. Say there is no scientific explanation for this. This should not have happened. We can't explain it. 70 such miracles have, have occurred. Um, now, the, the one, uh, the, the, the most, um, I would say, uh, the apparition which, which left the, the, the greatest impact uh, occurred on March 25th, the Feast of the Annunciation. And this is when Our Lady answered Bernadette's request of who she was. For until this time, Bernadette, people would say, so you're, you're seeing the Blessed Virgin. And Bernadette would reply, I don't know who she is. She appears to be a young, young girl, about 16, uh, with, with, um, I think it was, um, wearing a white dress, a blue girdle, and yellow roses on each foot. She hadn't said who she was. 
But on March 25th, uh, Bernadette asked, who are you? And she replied, I am the Immaculate Conception. And um, that, was, that was very, um, what do you call it, um, momentous. Uh, Bernadette was poor and ignorant. She, she barely even knew what that was. And there's no way that she would have known that four years earlier, um, I mean, what she could have known, but four years earlier, Pius IX had declared in his encyclical, Ineffabilis Deus, that uh, our, the, the doctrine of Our Lady's Immaculate Conception was indeed a dogma of the Church. It was incontrovertibly true. So four years after the Pope makes his declaration, there's this miraculous apparition, and Our Lady herself refers to her, herself using that title. Uh, and, and so this, is, this should be seen as a sign of divine approbation. What our Lord said to St. Peter, what, what you bind on earth is bound in heaven, what you loose on earth is loosed in heaven. Now that wasn't a... Um, you know, it wasn't like, a, a, okay, Peter, you know, whatever you say, whatever the popes say from here on, heaven is going to abide by it. That's not what it was. It was uh, heaven is going to so influence your decisions that anything you say uh, f with the authority of the office is going, to be, um, is going to be the inspiration from heaven. It's like you're only going to say what God wants you to say when it comes to matters of faith and morals and dogmas of the church. And so this apparition here, and Our Lady using that title, is a, um, a sign of that. And indeed, it, was, it, would, it would only come uh, a few years later, in 1870, uh, the doctrine of papal infallibility uh, would be declared. Uh, the final vision, as I mentioned, of Bernadette occurred on 16 July, uh, the, the Feast of Our Lady of Mount Carmel. And of course, by this time, uh, such a stir had been caused in, in the area that the grotto had been barricaded by local authorities. Uh, St. Bernadette knelt outside and said that Our Lady had never before looked, appeared so beautiful. And then that was it. That was the last apparition. Nothing more, nothing spectacular. Uh, so for St. Bernadette, for her life, uh, eight years later, in 1866, she joined the Sisters of Charity in the town of uh, uh, a small town in France, along with 42 other postulants. They served the poor and the sick in a hospice in that town, and there she spent the rest of her brief life working in the infirmary, acting as a sacristan and doing embroidery for sacred vestments. Uh, the, it is said that her contemporaries admired her humility and her spirit of sacrifice. Uh, once she was asked by another nun if she had temptations to pride because she had been favored by the Blessed Mother. Uh, Bernadette responded, how can I? The Blessed Virgin chose me only because I was the most ignorant. On another occasion, someone asked her about the apparitions, and she replied, The Virgin used me as a broom to remove the dust. When the work is done, the broom is put behind the door again. Uh, another time, this is in 1870, and the Prussian armies were marching toward Paris, and the sisters were working in a hospital, and there was danger they might be overtaken by the enemy. A uh, visitor there at the time asked Bernadette, did you receive in the Grotto of Lourdes, or after then, any revelations related to the future and the fate of France? Did the Blessed Virgin deliver any warning for France or any threats? Bernadette responded, no. Uh, the person went on, the Prussians are at our gates. Does that not cause you any fear? She responded, no. There is thus nothing to fear? And Bernadette responded, I fear only bad Catholics. And that's, that's uh, she, you know, kind of a famous phrase. There's, I only, there's only one thing I fear, bad Catholics. Uh, she eventually contracted tuberculosis and died after several years of increasing pain and illness at the age of 35 on 16 April in 1879. Uh, she was canonized by Pius XI on December 8th in 1933. As we know, December 8th, Feast of the Immaculate Conception. Uh, so, um, you know, quite, quite the uh, event in, in the history of the church and, and the revelation from Our Lady, uh, but also the, the, the striking humility of Bernadette. Um, and, and this, I would, I would point out what, what St. John of the Cross and others, uh, Carmelites especially, have said. It is not visions. Just because you have a vision doesn't mean that you are some incredible saint. Uh, uh, it wasn't because Bernadette was a saint that she had a vision. She says herself, she was ignorant, 
uh, she was uh, not very pious, and she had this vision. It was after the vision, then she became a saint. How? By humility, by sacrifice, by work, by serving the poor and the sick, by, being, by, by, by accepting the, the, the life God had chosen for her. Right? That is how we become a saint. And so you don't have to have a vision to, to become holy. You don't have to have visions. It's not a sign of sanctity. It can be dispositive of sanctity, but it's not, it's not necessarily going to make you a saint, and it's not a sign that you are a saint. And the reverse is true. Oh, I, just because you're not having visions doesn't mean you're not on the path, on the path to sanctity. So, so don't think that these extraordinary things are necessary. Uh, but also I'll point out uh, um, the significance of the fact that, that um, there was that healing spring that Bernadette um, dug out at the, at the request of Our Lady, and 70 people were inexplicably he- cured of these illnesses. But Bernadette died at 35 of tuberculosis. She wasn't cured. She was healing other people, right? That stream was healing other people, but not Bernadette. She herself was not healed by it. And she was a cause of it, or at least part of the, involved in the cause of it. And that lets us know that, um, you know, healing in body is not really what is important. It's healing in soul. It's infir- infirmities in the soul that is far more important than infirmities uh, in any bodily ills or sicknesses. And that's part of what our lady said. I cannot promise you happiness in this life, only the next. I cannot promise you healing in this life, only in the next. And so on, right, and so forth. Uh, and how very fitting that it is Our Lady under the title of Immaculate Conception that, that this healing water is flowing. Uh, because it is, it, the Immaculate Conception is what preserved Our Lady from original sin. And all sickness, all death, uh, every evil in the world comes because of original sin. It is healing from original sin that, that, that is the true healing. And so how, how, how fitting that Our Lady, who never was stained, never was wounded, never needed healing uh, because she was preserved from original sin, right? How fitting that it would be that title of hers uh, in which would come forth this, this healing spring for others. Uh, we are to learn, right? Uh, receive baptism. The flowing waters of baptism, right? Heals our soul of original sin. And then we spend the rest of our lives, right, uh, trying to continue that, uh, working at our vices, our faults, our imperfections, and so on. Uh, and the consequences are, are, are great. If we fail in that duty, if we fail to correspond with our baptismal graces, um, we end up bad Catholics. And that's what burned that feared, is people who knew better. People who should be setting the example but weren't. People to whom the unbaptized world looked at and said, well, if you're followers of Christ, you sure don't look like it. You sure don't act like it. And that's a scandal. It's a scandal to the world. Uh, so we need, to, we need to ask ourselves and, and, and really reflect, are we living up to those baptismal promises which, which, which are to follow Christ, to be conformed to Christ, to suffer well, to suffer for others, uh, to suffer evils in this world, not looking for rewards in, in this world or this life, but only in the next? But how often do we find ourselves complaining? God, why don't you heal me? Why don't you uh, uh, fix this situation? Why don't you make me comfortable? Right? We're very often angry that God is making us holy instead of making us comfortable. That's not what he's for. Uh, so let us reflect upon that and ask uh, uh, the intercession of St. Bernadette that we might be healed in soul of our maladies, of our, 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 our vicious inclinations, of p- impatience, selfishness, anger, uh, uh, sensuality, indulgence, gluttony, laziness, whatever it may be. Those are the maladies we need to be healed from uh, and which God wants to heal us, and that's up to us. Whether we get cancer or not, or, or, or some kind of disease, we can't necessarily help that. But we can change the diseases of our souls, and that's what we should be concerned about. Uh, so let's ask St. Bernadette for her prayers and her intercession, and as well as Our Lady of the Immaculate Conception. God bless you all. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.